Welcome to Understanding Voice over IP3. My name is Eric Cole. In this course, we're going to understand call flow in the IP world, and principally that means SIP. So we're going to start off in the first part by understanding what SIP is and what it can do and what its relationship is to other protocols, and then the SIP trapezoid, how we actually set up a phone call and how before that happens you have to register with a location service. In the second part, we're going to look at carrier interconnect. So we'll talk about interconnecting to local exchange carriers at the IP level. And we'll talk about session border controllers. And then we'll talk also about Megaco, Media Gateway Control Protocol. And finish off with a couple of overviews of integrating messaging systems and connecting to the phone network at the DS0 level. The next step, once we get the invite message at the called party's SIP server, is we have to find the far end telephone. And the way that happens is that the called party, so this is Zach's SIP server, uses the location database to do a lookup. So it's going to take this address of record that it received, which is zach at zulu.com, and it's going to do a database lookup in the location server, and it's going to get an answer back, and in this case, it's an IP address comes back. So Zach's SIP server says great, and it relays the invite message to that IP address. Now that IP address is actually the IP address of Zach's telephone, because remember, he updated the location database with that before this call happened. So at this point, Zach's SIP proxy sends a message back to Aaron's SIP server saying ringing. And that then relays it to Aaron's telephone saying ringing. And his phone might start making some ringback tone happen in his ear here. So he hears a call progress tone. And then Zach is sitting there, his phone is ringing, and he looks at the caller ID and sees it's Aaron. So he says, OK, and he picks up the phone. And as soon as he picks up the phone, then an OK message is transmitted from the phone to Zach's SIP proxy, and that's sent to Aaron's SIP proxy, and that's sent to Aaron's telephone. And then in this standard, the way it's written, to complete the circle, Aaron's phone has to send an acknowledgement to Zach's phone directly. And once that happens, the SIP drops out of the story. Those two proxy servers drop out of the story, and the two telephones now exchange IP packets directly back and forth. Now you can dig into the details if you want to, and certainly this RFC is available pretty easily on the internet. If you want to understand some more of the things, what you'd want to look at is, well, how exactly do they then exchange IP messages back and forth uh, in order to do the phone call. I understand the part about knowing where your SIP proxy is, and I understand the part about that SIP proxy doing a DNS to look up to find out the other SIP proxy, and I understand the idea of that SIP proxy looking up in a location to find the foreign telephone. So they all know who each other is, but then how do we get the information so they can subsequently communicate voice in IP packets, the media communications? Well, it turns out that when we send the ringing message back, part of the payload would have the actual contact URI. And then when it sends the OK message, when Zach goes off hook, Part of the payload in the OK message is the session description protocol, and this contains the IP address and the port number that Aaron's phone is going to use to talk to Zach's phone. And similarly, when he sends an ACK, he gets the same information to be able to talk back in the other direction. So then they subsequently exchange whatever, typically it'd be voice of this regular phone call, but it could be video as well or whiteboarding or what have you. 
And then at one point, if one or the other wants to hang up, then one more exchange of SIP messages happen. One sends a buy directly from one terminal to the other, and then that one sends an ACK back, and that's the end of the phone call. And one of the great things about this is the location service because we're going to be able to have sophisticated call filtering and call disposition rules. And these are going to be necessary too. You think spam with email is bad? Just wait for spit. That's spam over internet telephony. I mean, just think of the automatic advertisements that the carpet cleaning company is going to be able to spew out disguised as voice over IP phone calls. Just wait. So this business of filtering phone calls is going to become quite important and there's a very elegant mechanism for doing it in SIP. On the location database you can have a contact list that lists different attributes as you said like business calls or personal or your business line or your home line or your teenagers or so forth. But then we could also have quite a few rules. And these rules could use inputs like who it is who's calling, whether they've authenticated or not, so you know that that's who it is who's calling, or whether they're just claiming that that's who it is who's calling, what time of day it is, what your status is. And it could combine all of these things with algorithms to decide what answer it gives back when their proxy asks your proxy to ask a terminal whether it wants to take a phone call or not. For example, you could have it set so that if anybody on this list of spitters, this is the National Spit Database, the people who send unwanted IP phone calls, if any of these people ever call, then the answer that's going to come back from your SIP server is sorry service unavailable it's an error message number 401 or something like that if it's anybody from this list of people who are going to be calling which is like your family then it will always go through to the place you last registered on like it could be your cell phone or your landline so it'll go through to the best available one other people maybe you know this troublesome person has been calling you bugging you, you don't really want to talk to them well you could enter you know, a user interface on your SIP proxy is if that person calls they always go to voicemail so what's gonna happen is they're gonna call your number your address of record it'll come to your SIP proxy your SIP proxy will look at the caller ID and then it'll look at the filtering rules and it'll then ask the voicemail system do you want to take this call and the voicemail system will say yes and they'll get an answer saying okay and then they'll be talking to voicemail not to your telephone we could have other things like when you are on the road what would happen is that once you got to your hotel room you could register it so that the IP address of the phone sitting on the desk in your hotel room is now your business line so if somebody calls your business number your SIP server will go and look in the location database it'll get the URI of that hotel room phone and somebody calls your business line your hotel room phone starts ringing but if you don't answer then it's going to do a no answer transfer to the voicemail system. But the difference between what we have right now and what we're going to have is it won't be the hotel's voicemail that picks up. It will be your voicemail system. Because all of these things are now independent. The fact that the first time through it decided to send the phone call to that particular terminal does not mean that it has to then go to the voicemail system that's physically close to that terminal. No, it can go to a different voicemail system on the other side of the continent.